How's it going? This is Shane Thomas from Country Music Guitar Classics. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips on how to make bar chords. These bar chords are a bear to make, especially when you're first learning how to play the guitar. But once you learn how to play them, you can play all kinds of songs by knowing the shapes of bar chords. But they are tough. They are difficult to learn at first, but these five tips will have you playing bar chords in no time. All right, before we get started, a couple things about your guitar. One thing that you want to keep in mind is the thickness of the neck of the guitar. This is called the neck of the guitar. And some, like classical guitars or nylon string guitars, their necks are thicker. So it depends on what kind of guitar you have. Might be leading to the problem of you having trouble playing bar chords. The thickness of the neck plays into it. Also, you might want to, if you hadn't already, Take your guitar to a guitar shop, a music store, somebody that works on guitars and have it it's set up. Check the, what's called the action or the setup of your guitar. Because sometimes that can play a factor into how easy or difficult it is for you to make bar chords. When you get it set up, you make sure the height uh, from the fretboard, the strings from the fretboard are appropriate. Uh, the way you can handle the guitar and the strings, the, the action of it, they call it. Uh, just make sure that's set up at a normal, acceptable uh, setting so that way you know you're getting the most out of your guitar when you're playing it, if you hadn't already. So those two are just kind of little, little tips before you even get started on how to play bar chords. So assuming you got an appropriate guitar with the appropriate size neck, the action that it's been set up for you, in the optimal manner, then we can start playing bar chords. And one of the first tips that you want to consider when you're playing bar chords is it's more about the strength and the technique of your hands and your arms versus the flexibility. What I mean is sometimes people think they need to like stretch their fingers, do stretching exercises to play bar chords. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt anything. But it's more about the position and the technique and the strength of your fingers, the pressure you apply of your fingers that's going to make playing the bar chords uh, pretty easy for you. So the first tip I have for you when learning how to play the guitar is don't learn bar chords up here on that first fret. A little good tip to kind of keep in mind when you're first learning bar chords is play up here on these higher frets. Most guitars have these dots that represents the third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, twelfth fret, so on and so forth. Well, when you're first learning the guitar and bar chords, start up here on these high frets, say like the seventh fret. It's going to be a lot easier to learn how to play those bar chords on these frets up here. Okay, so that's a good little tip that right off the bat can help you out. When you're learning bar chords, practice up here on these high frets. They're going to be easier to play and you're going to learn the proper shape of bar chords and your finger is going to get more used to playing that proper shape versus down here. It's a lot more difficult there. A lot of people, when they're trying to learn chords, naturally will go down here like this F. A major chord but a good tip is to start up here in the higher frets all right assuming we're going to start up here on the higher frets another thing is the pressure that you put on the strings the more pressure you put on the harder you squeeze the worse off you're going to be your hands your fingers your forearm muscles they're going to get fatigued just like golf. If anybody, I love playing golf. So if you play golf, you might can kind of relate to this analogy. When you play golf, when you grip the golf club, you want to hold it like they say, like you're holding like a bird and you don't want to squeeze that bird to death or you're going to kill it. You lightly squeezed your golf club grip. That grip pressure shouldn't be as hard as you could squeeze. Same thing with playing the guitar and squeezing on the neck of your guitar. Yeah, you want to have, you got to have pressure. If you don't have pressure, it's not going to sound right. 
but then again, you don't want to squeeze it to death, right? So put that pressure, I say on a scale of one to 10, maybe like a seven, eight, not as hard as you can squeeze, but lightly squeeze, but enough to press down properly on those, those frets that you're going to play. So the pre you need pressure, but not too much, or you're going to get fatigued and your hands are going to get tired. And when your hands get tired and your fingers get tired, you can't press down the strings on the frets. It, it's pretty simple. All right, so now that we we playing up here, when we're learning bar chords, play on these high frets, apply, apply some pressure, probably on a scale of one to 10, seven to eight. So some pre pressure, but not squeezing it to death. We could take the next step. All right, the next step, the next little tip when you're playing bar chords is this. If you know how to play the A minor chord down here, the open A minor, the open E major chord, and the E minor chord, that those are good shapes to learn how to play bar chords. Now, you normally, when you play A minor, E minor, you use that index finger. Well, we're going to need the first finger, the index finger, to, for the bars of our bar chord. So we can't play exactly like the A minor, the E major, and the E minor as far as the fingerings go. So what you want to do is, instead of using your first finger, like you do when you're playing the A minor and the E minor, you want to use your second finger. So what I mean is this. So picture we're going to learn how to play bar chords on this seventh fret. You go down here, one more fret, and you're going to make that A minor shape like this. But I'm going to use my second finger, so my middle finger, ring finger, and pinky to play that shape. To play the E major shape on the seventh fret, I just simply move up strings. Okay, so it's the shape this is what we want to get used to. Let me scoot in a little bit. So that's the E major shape. That's the A minor shape. And that's the E minor shape. Ooh, that sounds pretty good right there. <laughs> All right, so why that's important is you got the bulk of the bar chords right there. Okay, but you don't have the, the hardest part, and this is where people struggle when they're playing the bar chords, is this, this is why they call it the bar chord, you're barring all the strings with that index finger. All right, so it comes down to technique. It's gonna take some time, just because you get the right technique doesn't mean you're magically gonna get the bar chords down, but it's gonna really up your chances, or increase, reduce, I should say, your time the time frame of learning the bar chords. So again, get used to playing the A minor shape, the E major shape, and the E minor shape with your middle finger, ring finger, and your pinky. All right? And that's gonna take place one fret from where you're gonna use your index finger, your bar chords. All right, so now let's talk technique. We're going to play up here on these high frets. We're going to press down some, but not too hard. And we're going to play the A minor, the E major, and the E minor shape. Okay, once you get used to doing that with those three fingers, we're going to add that index finger. All right, now, we don't want to neglect what's going on with your, your right, if you play guitar, with, when you strum with your right arm or your right hand. You want to get used to squeezing like you're holding something like a pillow or something under your, your, your arm here. So picture a pillow or something as your guitar, and you just want to squeeze it. You, you want to press that guitar. See how my guitar is coming up here? All I'm doing is just squeezing, reducing the space between my arm and the side, my side here, or my chest muscles, and that causes the guitar to be closer to you and it pops it up at an angle. And that's very important because you want to squeeze. You don't want to use this arm, your left arm, to kind of constantly pull it in. Your right arm's going to do that. And that 
causes that neck to come up a little bit and closer to your body, which makes it easier to do these patterns, these bar core patterns. All right, so always put a little pressure with that right arm, squeeze that guitar to you a little bit, just like you're holding a pillow underneath your arm. And then with your left hand, this is the hardest part, and this is where people uh, get frustrated and have difficulty, is we're gonna finish the bar chord. Couple things to keep in mind is, when you're playing, let's say we're gonna play that E major shape, because we're gonna play a, a major bar chord. So there's an E major shape. We're going to take your first finger and just, just get used to doing adding notes at a time. So I've been playing that E major shape like that. I can press down on that seventh fret first string, see what that's like. And then eventually you want to do this. See how my thumb is over here over the, the neck of the guitar? Well, you don't want that. You want that thumb to be halfway on the guitar neck. So what you do is, and here's a good thing that always helped me remember this, picture like you're gonna throw an uppercut. I mean, don't do it, of course, but that's the action you want. And you want that hand to swing under like that, so your thumb is about halfway on the neck there, halfway down the neck, which causes your hand to come up and your elbow tucks in. So it's like this, so like you're giving an uppercut to somebody or or some other inappropriate gesture or somebody cuts you off in traffic kind of so it's like that so remember that motion you're you do that uppercut the elbow comes in tucks in close to your body which naturally makes your thumb go halfway down the the neck of your guitar and it causes these these fingers to be more in a more comfortable position so now I got the bar chord like this. Don't, don't, especially when you're learning, it's okay to don't have to play the bottom two strings. It's okay to do that at first. But what you want to get used to is just making that first finger. See how it's flat like that? And if I, if I got my thumb over here, it's not going to work. It's going to be super hard for me to make that. I could kind of pull it off, but it's not comfortable. So again, the thumb goes down, halfway down the neck, which causes this index finger to flatten out. And that's what you want. You don't want like a bend in that, that it's not gonna work. So we'll get that flat on the neck. And that, again, I can't say this enough, the elbow tucks in, the thumb goes halfway down the neck, which makes it easier to do that. All right. Here's the final tip. So now we're gonna to try to put it all together and we're actually gonna to try to make a bar chord. That first finger, when we make a bar chord, bars all the strings. That's why they call it a bar chord. Okay? Some people like to just hammer down, like when you're, if you're playing the, if you got that E major shape right there, just get used to doing that, like hammering down and making that flat like that. That kind of gets that finger used to in that position quick. And remember, you want that flattened down. But what I want to stress is don't strum at first. Eventually, you'll be able to strum these bar chords. But what I want you to do is pluck each string. So we got our E major position. And again, we want to do it on these high frets, right? In this particular example, I'm starting here on the seventh fret. So I play that E major position. I make sure my thumb comes down, my elbow tucks in to where this index finger is flat like that. And I'm going to pluck each string. Hear how some of them are buzzing like that? All right, well, that's why I want you to pluck, not strum because as you practice, you'll, if you're like, all right, that don't sound right. What's wrong here? Well, then I gotta pay attention to this ring finger, tuck my thumb under a little bit, and that makes that happen. 
A very common issue is that high E string. See where I'm plucking there? You'll get all these, but that last one won't be right. So again, you check, make sure that that index finger is flat, make sure that elbow's tucked in, make sure that thumb's about halfway down. And then you'll be able to... But the main thing I want you to get used to is plucking each string till you hear maybe a buzz or something. And then you just work on that. You notice your hand position, notice how it feels, make sure that index finger's straightened out. It's just trial and error. But you won't be able to know what strings are not being played if you're just strumming. So take your time, pluck each one. See, my middle finger's not right there. There. So you just play around with it. And you would do the same thing. Like, all you have to do when you play that E minor position is take the middle finger off because you'll be playing a lot of minor chords like this, like this F sharp minor here on the second fret. That's used a lot in a lot of songs, country songs and other songs. All that is is a bar chord without the uh, middle finger on it. And I'm playing that E minor position. So back up here at the seventh fret, get used, play around with these different shapes. Pluck each one. That's the E major position. Take your middle finger off, practice this. See that little buzz? So I would work on that. Make sure I adjust my hand position. Make sure that joint of that index finger is laying flat. And then the A minor position, which is lower, starting here on the second string and the third and fourth string. And the bar chord would be the same. You don't have to play the top string, the sixth string, when you do bar chords in the minor position, which is what this is. So you just start here on the fifth string, pluck each one. Just make sure you practice, pluck each one. Make sure there's no buzzing. If there is, check your hand position. Make sure your elbow's tucked in. Make sure this right arm's hugging that pillow, pulling it close to you. And if you do that, and that's what I would suggest and recommend, just do everything here on the seventh fret or the ninth fret until you learn these positions, until your hands get used to playing, being in this position, your fingers being in that position, doing those three shapes, the, the E shape, the E minor shape, and the A minor shape. And then you can, once you have that down, you just play that position all up and down the neck and you will have bar chords and all kinds of chords that you're going to play because the position of those chords don't change right that's the same chord shapes same chord positions but they're different chords nothing changes except where you're playing them on the fretboard and then that opens up a plethora of chords for you okay so again let's repeat real quick if you're learning bar chords, try to do it here on the high frets. Make sure you do that. When you first learn, it's going to be so much easier than playing down here on the lower frets towards the end of your guitar. Put some pressure on there, but not too much. The harder you squeeze, the more your hand's going to get wore out and the less effective it's going to be. On a scale of 1 to 10, try 7 or 8 when you're pressing down. Press when you play the chords. Remember that E major shape chord, the E minor shape chord, and the A minor shape chord with your second, third, and uh, where your, your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky. And then the last, certainly not least, you want to tuck that elbow in. You want to make sure that that right arm is pulling that guitar close to you. Like you're hugging a pillow underneath your elbow and your arm and you want that thumb to be halfway down the neck of your guitar like that so you can be in a comfortable position here and you want that index finger to be flat and as you do it just i would say maybe each week try to add another 
another string here when you're playing the bar chords. And eventually, your hands will get used to this position. It's gonna take some time, but those tips, those five tips should help you play bar chords. All right, if you like this video, I appreciate it. You hit that like button. If you hadn't already, I appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get all kinds of guitar tips and country music song tutorials as soon as I publish them. All right, you keep practicing bar chords. I'm Shane Thomas. Y'all keep humming and strumming. Take care.